and it's like it, it can be exhausting like it can, it can be like uh you know demeaning in a way like uh like it's already like uh to a, like to a point where I have like this hell of a white name Casey Jennings now if you like close your eyes and and uh and picture of someone calling out my name like a like a white man calling out my name or a black man calling out my name said so, okay we have tonight with us Casey Jennings what would you think you think oh okay yeah okay white man or would you think oh okay this is a black man what 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 would you picture in your head of what Casey Jennings would look like if someone were to announce my name especially me talking like this too I don't do this because you know I got a thing for radio I probably should have majored in radio to be uh, honest with you but you know bills gets in the way and puts them in a situation where I'm like okay well I mean, I could, but that require a, a lot more debt, a lot more debt, you know, debt, I mean, it, it require a lot more debt, and yeah, it's like, it's like, we won't have any more time for that. Uh, Black-ish, in a recent episode of TV sitcom Black-ish, titled Black Like Us, and Diane actress Marche Martin looks darker in a classroom photo. It was made clear we are still grappling with colorism. The storyline drew on our experiences of one of the show's executive producers, Peter Sashi, uh, who is of mixed race and admits he never really acknowledged his light skin privilege. By POC, we have faced struggles whether they are mixed or not but preferential treatment is given to those on the lighter end of the spectrum. For dark-skinned black women, it not only means being passed over for lighter-skinned women in a dating and labor market, but also means rarely seeing a dark-skinned woman as the love interest of the main character. And that is facts, man. Like, you will never see a dark skinned woman in a commercial or in a TV show or in a movie and this is like coming coming from like when they put black women with white men it's been like a it's been like a very serious trend lately too like in commercials movies shows like I pay attention to this shit man like like any kind of movie or show that that um, has a black woman falling in love with a white man, the black woman is always either brown skin or mostly light skin. Mostly light skin, and a white skin man. Sometimes they have, you know, like brown skin sister in there, but you know, uh, that's it, man. That's it. They won't include no dark skin woman in there. They won't include her in there. And it's still a thing too. The shit's still happening too. It's like okay, because yeah, like at first it was like it was a what a uh, a black man a white woman. But, uh, you know, they are usually calling Ebony and uh, uh, Ivory. Ebony and Ivory. So, uh, they'll, they'll say shit like that, and, you know, and it's still, it's still, like, frustrating and exhausting. As you can see in my voice. <laughs> Apologize for that little glitch. 
um, skin lightning in the stream. Uh, this shit right here too. And 2016, Zoe Zadena was deemed as not being dark enough by some to play the Epinonius, uh Nina Simone and had to use makeup to darken her skin, but usually it is the opposite. Yeah, first first up before continuing on with uh, this uh, section of the article, I've, I have not seen that movie, but I have seen like a trailer or like some clips of it. And yeah, I thought there was some bullshit too. They shouldn't have, Zoe so shouldn't have agreed to it. But I, I believe she was a lot younger back then, back in 2016. Uh, whenever the movie was made. I'm pretty sure she knows now that um that was very poor of uh the movie's creators and uh, executive like producers and casting and stuff, shit like that. I'm pretty sure she knows now that that was wrong. That was that was some bullshit. Uh, continuing on, the skin lightening uh industry is a multi billion there, billion dollar industry profiting from the Stigmatization of dark skin everywhere India, Asia, Africa, the Caribbean and Ar- Ar- Arab countries says Campbell um, the centuries old practice which is common in the US and throughout the world is achieved through pills, creams and soaps is still ever so popular uh, the World Health Organization reports that skin lining is widespread in many African Asia in the Caribbean countries. When the media or advertising industry uses dark skin actors, it technically, technically uh, engages in bleaching or lightening these actors, says Campbell. The practice doesn't show any sign of slowing down as it is st- estimated that the industry market could be valued at $31.2 billion by 2024, it breeds destructive colloquialisms such as you're beautiful for a dark skinned woman, she says. Uh, skin lightning advertisements reinforce the stigma against dark skinned people. I have seen a um, documentary on it too. Where, uh, yes, yeah, it was like two documentaries, you know. One from Vice, which featured women in Asia, uh, you know, lightening their skin because, you know, Bollywood, you know, Bollywood requests lighter skin women than darker skin women. So, you know, you have uh, these, these dark skin women lightening their skin if either like creams or you know like soaps or pills then uh the same thing yeah like yeah the same thing happened with uh women in Japan or um Korea which is all usually which is all Asia I apologize um trying to wrap this shit <laughs> all in my head but yeah, it's like it's in Japan, Korea, um, India, and uh, yeah, like this other documentary I seen was women in Africa as well. That uh, uses to use skin lighting too, you know, to appear uh, more attractable, attractable. More attractive, or uh, you know, um, yeah, it's like some real internal shit going on there, man. How to combat colorism? Um, we're gonna take another quick break, and uh, we'll be back with more colorism. On the perspective. Stay tuned. 
Hello and good morning. You're listening to KC Genesis in the AM. I'm your host, KC Genesis. So how to combat your colorism. How to combat colorism. As is the case with colorism, uncomfortable and honest conversations need to take place in order for there to be self-reflection and change. You need to get to a place where it is intolerable to judge someone based on the color of their skin. Agreed. Uh... Use your social privilege for good. If you have lighter skin, you are much more likely to be afforded privileges than people of darker complexions of any race, ethnic, background uh, do not have access to. You can, however, use this privilege to advocate for the better treatment of people with darker skin. I agree. Um, like we as light skinned people need to stand up for our counterparts you know that that means like with anything as far as like with education wealth health um just anything that discriminates dark-skinned people um whether it's like with your friend groups or your family um like today i've read that um a mixed woman it's just coming from a mixed woman of half black half white woman you know like she she is so she was so blinded to what her to what her significant others um what her significant other and her and uh his family were doing to her that someone had to call her out on it and um, it starts like with, it starts with, you know, um, where her significant other is white, you know, his family is white as well. And uh, he has, he has brothers to have white girlfriends. And then um, they usually have this dinner family get together like every month where, uh, like where it's her husband and then the husband's brothers and, and their girlfriends are all invited. You know, and um, the the mixed woman didn't know. The mixed woman had had no idea like, this was based on the color of her skin because you know, um, her husband, mom, her mother in law didn't like her. I didn't. I didn't. I sh- like her mother in law didn't invite her to the family dinner and. You know, she's been married to this man for like what, two or three years, and um, yeah. And before that, you know, they were like engaged for like five years, so it's basically like what, uh, seven or eight years. But yeah, like, like the mother never invited her out to um, the family dinner, and um, and here's the fucked up part about it too, is that. Her husband, the uh, son of the mother, you know, like uh, you know, like like uh, he'll he'll go he'll he'll go along with this too, you know, he'll he'll go along with this, and uh, just tell the wife his he'll tell his wife, you know, like it's best that you sit this one now, or uh, you know, that hey, you're not invited, you know, to the family dinner, you know. So like uh so uh this one time, you know, um like she found out where they were having dinner and so uh she did some inspection, you know, she uh she also went to the restaurant as well, you know, but sat far away from them. So uh so she got up and as like she was walking to the bathroom where, you know, of course they caught her and uh, and I, I go ahead like uh, with uh, like what, the husband's parents and his brothers and their girlfriends too, they're all white, you know, they're all white, and um, the wife, you know, she confronted the husband about that, and then the husband, the husband called her an asshole, you know, for uh call him out about that you know like I said like why do you not want me 
like to be invited.